Just quit. You can't do this. You've had enough. Just call it a day. It's easier. This is what my brain was telling me to do 11 miles into the Great North Run. As far as I could see, I had two options. Quit or gamble and see if I could finish the hardest thing I've ever done. Cheers to the Great North Run. That was fun, wasn't it? So I remember waking up on the morning and I felt very, very anxious, like sick anxious. Um, I remember having to just take some deep breaths, just get ready, do what I needed to do, get changed, get in the car and put some Disney on because <laughs> Disney always makes me feel better. <laughs> I remember just singing to Disney just to forget about everything for a second. And then I remember getting to South Shields and parking the car. And there was only one other car in the car park. And I think that quietness almost helped me a little bit because it was a bit of calm. I, I didn't have to think about it too much. Just had to go, go with the steps of the day. And know that the next thing was to just get on the metro. That was the next thing. Just get on the metro. And thankfully that was quiet as well. Because the one thing I was dreading that morning was a busy metro. Because just the thought of a busy train makes me anxious as it is. So <laughs> I was glad that we could just get a seat and just chill. So once we arrived in Newcastle, first thing on the list was Weatherspoons. <laughs> Best place to go to the toilet. <laughs> so emergency toilet, Weatherspoons it was. We had some porridge cup of coffee, lots of water because we knew it was going to be a hot day and it was just a moment for it to be just us two, which was nice. And then after that, we made our way to the pens, I guess, the start lines. I think the mood around me seemed to be absolutely buzzing. As far as I was concerned, I would say that everyone there seemed to be so excited for this race. A lot of people have probably already done it before, so they'd come back because they loved it so much. There were probably people like me who had never done a race before but were excited about their first race. But sometimes it's really hard to gauge whether people are as anxious as I was. But we were just walking. I think it was about a mile to walk to get to our pen. And the scale, of, I just can't get over the scale of people. That's what I just, my little brain can't fathom that. I remember we'd almost got to our pen and the main thing that was on my mind was how hot it was and how many people were stood in the sun and the race hadn't even started yet. And I'm thinking, I don't, I'm not sure I can do that. I didn't like training in the sun or the heat, I'd always go for early morning runs. So for me, the fact that it was gonna be a hot day added even more anxiety to everything because I was like, I'm not used to this. And then we got to our pen and <laughs> thankfully we could stand under a bridge for a bit, just for some shade. And even that, I think, because I was thinking about the heat, I forgot to think about the fact that I was about to do a half marathon. Because it was like I was only focusing on the next thing and the next thing was to get to our pen. And I was thinking, I can't stand in my pen in the sun, but I, it was in the shade. So I was like, great. So that kind of gave me something to make myself feel better, if, if that makes sense. And I remember sort of hearing the, I think there was a warm up going on and people were really getting into it. And I remember thinking, yeah, okay. I was sort of gearing myself up. And at that moment, I'd almost forgotten what was about to happen. And then, yeah, I, I just sort of was like, because everyone, everyone, everyone was so excited, I just sort of fed off it. I fed off this excitement. Because it's Mo Farah as well. Yeah, so it was Mo Farah's obviously last ever race. 
and um, he obviously kept getting mentioned and it was kind of exciting for him I guess and hearing that he'd gone like he he was do doing his race and then we'd start to move forward and I was like okay it's happening now but I don't I didn't realize how long it would take for us to get to the front I never even considered the scale of time that passed for the people at the back to be at the start line and it was probably I mean well Mo Farah had finished and we were nowhere near the front <laughs> that to me is ridiculous so we finally got to the start line and I think a bit of excitement hit me I was like because we've been waiting for so long I was like oh god we're finally here oh my gosh we're here like yay we're he like we don't have to wait any longer and then you cross that start line and you go oh no wait now I've got to do 13 was it 13.1 miles the great north run 2023 let's go let's go Charlotte and John and Mark. Ah, like, I think that first mile, it re everything was sinking in. And I think part of me thought everything would distract me. But it didn't. I remember feeling every step. I remember feeling the sun. I remember feeling those thoughts of, I've only just started this. I've still got 12.1 miles to go. I don't, I don't know if I can do it because I've already been on my feet for three hours and I've, I've only just started running. And I'll be honest, I found the first 5K really hard. I was walking more than I wanted to that early on. I think because I'd set up this 7.50, run walk, it's almost impossible to stick to that because you've got, I mean, the amount of people that are around you, you sort of go with it. You sort of feel like I can't, I, maybe I'll just keep going with everyone at this point. And then you hit a hill when you should be running. And I think I can't, I have to, I have to walk now. I can't wait. There was so much going through my mind for the first 5k and then I think I hit 5k and I I started feeling pain. Okay, 5k, three mile check-in. How is it going? It's hot. It is warm. Harder than you thought? It's hard. I thought I'd be distracted but I'm really not and I really didn't want to come on for a first catch-up being negative. I've just got this horrible pain in my shoulder. It's the pain that you uh, oh. encountered a while ago. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's it's a lot. Yeah. So we're running, walking this, and we're uh, just keeping our eye on your heart rate, aren't we? Oh, you cheeky monkey! So. Uh, yeah, we're just keeping our eye on it, and we'll see how we do, won't we? Yeah. I had this intense shoulder pain. I'd felt it once before in training at a park run. Once. I'm thinking, how am I going to get through the next 15K with this pain? I, it really started to terrify me that maybe there's a chance I won't do this or can't do this or am I going to have to stop? I never even considered that I would have to stop. But if this pain's already started, what, what, what am I going to do? Do I, I, do I just suck it up and carry on through the pain? Do I just hope that it doesn't get worse? And I think for me, it was just a case of, right, just, just walk for a bit, breathe, stretch out anything I needed to stretch out and just carry on. So between, between five kilometers and 10 kilometers, I remember I started to get into it. This pain had started to subside. I remember feeling how I felt during some of my stronger runs. 
and thinking, okay, we've got through that horrible first 5K. Maybe this is how the rest of it's going to feel. I remember being able to enjoy bands that were playing, drums, music, people cheering, enjoying like what was around me for the first time. Yes, like and subscribe, my man. And yeah, just thinking, okay, we can, I can have fun with this. I remember thinking, this is great. We're, we're doing this together. And I want to enjoy it. I don't want to be constantly worrying or complaining about something and letting my mind take over in a negative way because I'm not going to take all, any of this in and I'm not going to enjoy it. Are you having fun? <laughs> My body was just sort of getting used to it, I guess, and I think I've warmed up a bit now. And not only is it clouded over, oh, yeah, there's, there's a, a bit of a breeze. Beautiful breeze now. Oh. So we can move a bit better now, can't we? Yeah, I feel, feel more energetic. Yep. My legs are starting to seize up. Are they? Where's the pain? Can you describe it? It's like my whole legs. <laughs> Your whole legs. I can't describe it, I just feel like. I... I don't know, just my legs. It hurts, just hurt. <laughs> just my legs hurt. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, 14, slow down. Eight miles. Yeah. Pain. You can do it, you can do it. I felt pain in training. <laughs> yeah. Okay. We're still moving forward though, it's the only thing that matters. Three back-to-back -back park runs, 15k. Hurting? Yeah, keep going, keep going. Oh. 16k. We've just rolled over into the 16th kilometre. What does that mean? It means I've never done this distance before. <laughs> so we are literally going into the unknown. You are literally, you're literally going beyond anything you've ever done before. So just a park run to go. Isn't just it? a park run to just go. A park run. Do you fancy doing a park run now? No. <laughs> it's gonna hurt, but you're gonna get it done. It's probably the most painful park run ever. So when I got to 10 miles. I remember thinking, I've never done any, I've never done more than this before. And I think just before that, my legs had started to really hurt. Like my legs were going. And thinking, if my leg, I've done this distance before and not had to deal with this. But now I've got to that point I've never got to before and I'm, I'm starting, I'm starting to feel the pain and going, I've still got 5k to go. And that for me, it's only recently that a 5k has felt comfortable. So for a lot of people, when you say there's just 5k left, it's not much, but for me, 5k has always felt quite long. <laughs> so a park run has always felt quite difficult. And I know I do it every week, but it's taken a while for me to mentally think a 5k is achievable. So to have 5k left when you've been on your feet for three hours and then you've run 16 kilometers already, that was a big turning point for me mentally. It was getting hilly. I was getting tired. I was aching. And I, 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 had, I just had to slow everything down because I was really, really, I'd hit a wall. I was really finding it difficult at this point. So how would you describe that difference then between mile 10 and 11? It's just more pain. You're, 
really, really starting to hit you now, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. That's that hill. Let me just so see if I can extend this. That was quite brutal. Moving back. Quite a steep hill, isn't it? Is, is this probably the most you've struggled for the whole? Yeah, it's the most pain I've been in. Yeah. Well, it's I've funny because I was thinking like, oh, I think, feel like I'm not doing too bad considering I haven't done a huge amount of hill training. And then this happened for like three miles. Well, I've got some good news for you. Two miles to go. Come on. That's and most of it's flat and downhill. Yeah. It's just we, this last bit to do. When we get to that, I'll see what happens. I remember during that 5K, hearing some voices behind us shouting our names. And it was Dave and Sarah who had followed, well, they've been following you for a while now and they'd watched the, the training videos and they were just full of positivity. The way they beamed towards us, just full of smiles and excitement. And I almost had this push to just go with it. And it almost forced me to run along with them. I th we saw them at a really good time, I think. Yeah, I think it... I think I would have, I wouldn't have been running at that point if it wasn't for them. I think they gave me that bit of, that push that I needed. They, they didn't, they wouldn't have had a clue that that's what I needed, but I did. I remember, yeah, I remember you telling me, when you see the sea, there's a big downhill and then you turn the corner and it's pretty much the final mile. And then we saw the sea. <laughs> I think I can see the sea. You can see the sea. That's the sea. That's the sea. That's the sea for the moment. Where you see the sea. We can see the sea. We can see the sea. The sea. Yes! We can see the sea. <laughs> Here we go. And I think this wave of, oh my God, I'm nearly there. I've nearly done it. Hit me. What's the and I thought I'm, I'm gonna fly down this hill. I didn't need to conserve anything. I'd already, it had all gone by this point. So I just went with feeling rather than what I had physically left. I just saw the sea and thought, oh my God, we're, we're nearly here. So I just let my body take me down that hill. Whether it was the right thing to do or not, I don't know, but I did. I just let my weight take me down. And then we turned that corner and it says like, the final mile or whatever it is. Mo's last mile. Yeah, it was Mo's last mile this time, wasn't it? And I was like, it's just a mile to go. And of seeing the sea, the crowds, that final mile sign was a big boost. However, I still, I still physically was really struggling. So we have run 20 kilometers under a mile to go. How do you feel? I just feel like I've never been in this much pain running before. Yeah. Yeah. Go on, mate, you're doing amazing. But I'm just so happy to see the sea. I don't know if to laugh or cry. Do both. Oh. You'll be finished very soon. I just to feel a little bit sicky, but yeah. I'm okay. You're amazing. Do you want a gel? Or do you want yeah, anything? I'll have the last gel. You saying, you seeing the 800 meter in the distance and saying, let's walk to 800 meters. How do you feel about running the rest? And I, want, I, wanted, to, I wanted to do that. We're going to just walk until the 800 meters to go sign. And then we're going to run the rest. Yeah? Yeah. We can do it. You can do it. You've done amazingly well today. I'm so proud of you. I'm so proud. Am I on it? Am I on it? You're on it yeah! now, son. I'll edit that out. Just having a moment, yes. <laughs> yeah. Just purely based on I wanted to finish as strong as I could, but also because when we looked in the sky above us, <laughs> there was a storm coming. It was getting dark. It was getting dark. It was this weird cloud. Like, the clouds just looked angry. Like, it was a weird... Something weird had just happened, considering how beautifully sunny it had been 
something was coming and it wasn't good. Felt like a very long time before we got to the 400 meters. But I remember thinking, just keep a slow pace. Just keep a pace that's comfortable and just keep that going. And then we got to the 200 meters. And I think at that point, do you see whether you, you go to funnel into a side? And I, I knew that that turn was coming up. I remember that turn very well because from last year watching you, I was at the wrong finish line and it got moved to this right hand turn and I could see it come in. And as I went around that corner and I saw it, and I know there's not left, much left to go at that point, but I thought, just go. Just do your final sprint like you do at a park run and just put whatever you've got left into it and just go run, just go, run for your life. And it felt incredible. Go on, babe. Go on, babe. What have you got? You've done it. She's done it. She's going. She's going. Go on, babe. Yes. Go on, babe. <laughs> to cross that finish line, having felt all the feels, <laughs> physically and mentally during that last three hours of running and walking to finish. It's so hard to describe until you've done it. It's so hard to describe that feeling because probably more so if you've either never done it or never thought you could ever do it. How do you feel? Just try. How can you describe that feeling? Try your hardest. To describe to somebody who's never done a half marathon, who finally does one of the world's hardest and biggest half marathons, <laughs> finishes with a final sprint, as tired as you are, as exhilarated as you are, what's... What, 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 it's like... How do you feel? It's like this rush of emotion, like bearing in mind you are exhausted by this point, physically and mentally exhausted. <laughs> the Laura special, I love it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh my God, the pain. <laughs> you just proved to yourself that you can do hard things. That was painful. You were I... amazing from start to finish. It was hard, but not impossible. <laughs> turns out <laughs> yeah well done and then you just get this rush of I've just accomplished something that I never ever thought I could but I, I've, I've literally just done it and it, it's like that overwhelming feel of you know like when you're so happy you cry like you cry from happiness it was literally that, but almost more so to the point where you feel hysterical because you're so tired. You're just like, I remember just like thinking, I don't have to laugh or cry at this point because all 16 weeks of putting yourself through something to get to a point and then you, you've, you've just done it. You've done that four months and three hours of running and you've done it. Like it, it's almost too much to take in within in that second that you complete it. It's too much to take in because that's that's a long amount of time to squeeze into a second's worth of feelings. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like it's it, it's a lot, <laughs> but it's incredible. It's it's amazing. I remember walking over to get our medal. Thank you. And I think you said, you it's like there's been a, an eclipse. <laughs> and I was like, oh my gosh, it is so dark. But I was like, I just want to get my medal. Like, I've been waiting for this moment. I just want to get my medal. And we had the medal put over us. And I remember looking at you going, I can't believe it. Like, let's go get our t-shirt. I want to get a photo. I think literally a 
30 seconds after we picked up our bag with the t-shirt in. I heard people screaming. Why are people screaming? It's gone really dark. And it literally... And we've nowhere to hide. I've never seen rain like it. Welcome to South Shield. Oh, sunny South Shield. <laughs> well, that escalated quickly. I've never seen anything like this. I presume that. Just be careful, it's fast. It's just an incredibly positive experience. Not only for yourself, but for everyone. Like everyone has their own journeys. Everyone has their own stories. And you feel like, and you never feel alone. You, you not, want, not once did I feel alone. Obviously I was running with you. But you, they were, you're constantly surrounded by people going through the exact same thing as you. People having their own struggles, their own pains. And, and everyone is just, just amazing and supportive. And it just doesn't matter. No matter what you're going through, someone else will always relate. Or someone else will always be able to help you through it. Or there's almost a bigger picture than what, what your story is or what you're going through. And I think that's what's so amazing. The Great North Run embodies the human spirit at its very best. Everywhere you look, you can literally see people being the best versions of themselves. Everybody has their own struggles, but we all have one thing in common the desire to do something amazing. Whatever your reason to want to be part of this is, it's more than valid here. Whether you're running for yourself, somebody else, or even for someone who's not here anymore, you can sleep well that night knowing you were part of something special. Being part of the class of 2023 was something that I'll never forget. Memories were made that will last a lifetime. This is about more than just running. like to personally thank you all so much for all your support along the way you all got me over that finish line and thank you so much for your generous donations too finishing this race has made me realize that I can do hard things and I'm here to tell you that you can too GNR 2023 it's been emotional